Praise the Lord, dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you and I greet you in the name of our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to thank Him for His amazing grace and uh, through His tremendous mercies or everlasting mercies rather, He had carried us forward. He had carried us so far. And our God is not weary. Our God is not tired of helping us tired of um, not tired of uh, bearing our ba burdens and 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 he's tolerating our shortcomings right um, but it is we who lose heart in the middle of our journey um, that is life and that is why it's very important for every one of us to understand that do not lose heart right do not be tired of your problems do not be weary Bible says those who shall wait on the law, feet of the Lord, right, in the presence of the Lord, they will run and not be weary, meaning they will march forward. Nothing can stop them. Nothing can hold them back. I've seen so many amazing brothers and sisters, wonderful brothers and sisters in Christ. Nothing can stop them. And they will always be joyful and uh, that too in the midst of troubles and problems and painful situations. For, for example, sicknesses that are painful. They will still rejoice because why? Their hope is in Christ. Their blessed hope is in Christ. And I have, I myself have to improve a lot. I have improved compared to the past, what I was. But I still can improve. I still can press hard towards perfection. I still can work on my shortcomings, my behavioral pattern, right? my faith system, my belief system. I can improve. Why? Because I admit that I'm not perfect yet. And those who shall not admit they are called as liars, according to Bible in 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 to 10, right? You take and read, you will understand. If you say that, you know, if you don't believe in God, if you don't have faith in God, that itself is a sin. And many people don't admit, oh, that is not sin, brother, because I'm not smoking, I'm not a drunkard, I'm not a womanizer, therefore I'm not a sinner. Really? You want to know how many sinful deeds are there? I keep telling this. In almost every other sermon, I keep reminding these scriptures. Why? Because you should not live in deception, should not live in kind of blindfold state, should not live as, you know, what to say, some, some, I don't want to use any strong language here, right? Why? Because these are the things which will really, really drag you to the bottomless pit. And uh, that's exactly the reason why Christ came to this world to give that light on on every one of us, right? And uh, there are a lot of passive sins. In fact, when God had opened the doors for ministry, I spoke about this cross, truth about the cross, Jesus, and about is the cross and the significance of his sufferings and cross and how many people suffered like Jesus. I took examples like Joseph and David and Isaac and, you know, we compared and we, Joseph, um, we compared and we meditated. Then the immediate thing, what God reminds me is to talk about these passive sins. Why we call it as passive sins? Because people ignore. Because that's right inside of you and working. It's not externally visible. Even if it's externally visible, they take it so lightly. Right? I give you the scriptural references always. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 9. Colossians 3, 5 to 9. Mark 7, 21 to 23. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10, 1 Timothy 1, 9 and 10, and Galatians 5, 17 to 21, Romans 1, 29 to 32, Ephesians 4, 31, and Romans 6, 13 to 20. If you take and read all of these scriptures, you will understand one thing for sure, that is you are not perfect yet, <laughs> okay? Because it's not an easy task. That Why? Because all these scriptures will reveal... Um, the different categories of sinful deeds that are quite imminent, quite visible, and quite um, pretty much available in splendid measures across the ends of the earth in every human being almost. And it's okay if people are you know, unbelievers and belonging to a different religion and, and they are still in the mainline churches, Orthodox Christians, and they have not understood Bible yet. But how about you and me? You want to grow in the Lord. You're grounded and rooted in the word of God. You have taken water baptism many, many years ago. And you still live in passive sins. I mean, the more it's given, the more account is going to be asked, required of you. Is what Bible says in Matthew 12, 36 and Ecclesiastes 3, 15 and 12, 14. 
when you read this you will understand how important and how serious it is for you to walk in awareness walk in diligence walk in wisdom walk in light and be married as a church to the christ ephesians 5 the whole chapter 5 you read if that is not enough 1 john chapter 2 you take and read the whole chapter there are eight different categories it's like a checklist you can check who you are and you will get to know why because you consider these scriptures what i have told versus the checklist what i have told you just now when you mix up these two and compare introspect in fact you know what you need to fast and pray for 20 weeks at least <laughs> on the scriptures what i have told you you will discover so many things the garbage inside of you the filth inside of you the dirt inside of you right uh, all all your idiotic ideologies which men taught not not jesus taught men can also misinterpret it right many people may call what is right as wrong and wrong as right and you got to be very careful and that's where you need the leading of the holy spirit who is your helper who will remind you from the teachings of jesus christ who will um what is say explain you and help you understand convincingly from the teachings of jesus john 14:26 says that right so what i'm trying to say here is these are the things not only separates you from the love of god but it will take you slowly towards the pathway that leads to the bottomless pit and it'll be such a sad situation because oh no mercy is going to be shown on the day of judgment that at the time you want to enjoy this mercy grace forgiveness uh god's tolerance long suffering god is known for long suffering bound to mercies and compassions psalm 145 8 and 9 and psalm 147 11 and 103 11 you read all these things god is kind very very kind in his heart to forgive us and give us the chance n number of chances but even on earth god says i have a limit because i will not strive with the spirit of men forever neither will i hold my anger forever the wrath of god shall descend on you because you have insulted the blood covenant and the son of god and his holy spirit that is it in bible psalm 133 hebrews 1029 and john 336 the wrath of god shall descend and don't play with the word of god and don't be hypocrite acting before men and god hypocrites will never ever find their way to the kingdom of heaven that's why these teachings are very important that every bit and pieces we are fab, we are slicing and dicing we are we are defragmenting and we are presenting it to you yeah we spoke about the law of authority the law of obedience versus the law of disobedience all the series is available in our playlist right he spoke about the passive sense i told you right the, the top 20 passive sense i picked from the scriptural references what i have told you just couple of minutes ago we present it to you as a example and not only that so many series we learn from the life of harlot rahab the harlot we are a character study and as if that is not enough we spoke about grace versus mercy and uh, you you can just go to the play, playlist hundreds of playlists are already there there are hundreds of videos available right and right now what we are doing is the agape love and that is not enough we spoke about body mind spirit and soul the spiritual composition of human heart episode 1 is over there are 85 sessions or something available please go and listen right it's only going to help you my brother my my sister we love you so much and we want you to come to your senses come to light this book because this is a very serious time these are end times not only pandemic times <laughs> right end times God's uh, second coming Jesus second coming is any time possible it's ripe on the time is ripe on enough the harvest is ready yeah it's only that is being delayed by God because grace is extended the time of grace is extended 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 how long brother we had been waiting for 2000 years 2000 years equal to 2 days for God so don't worry about God right God is nobody knows his age the age of the earth soil test they have done the age is 3.54 billion years so you don't go don't get beyond your understanding first talk about you then let us talk about god you keep reasoning like um, you know like these, these are i need to use this language spiritual idiot they misinterpreted bible they bend the bible they bend the rules yeah they take things for granted they ignore what they need to consider where they need to basically um, embrace and apply to their you know uh, lives the doctrines of the bible uh, they they resist it you need to resist the devil not the word of god and what is your destination your destination is the lake of fire you deserve to go there because you live in self deception 
I know many people in my own family, blood relations. How many people? They are so, so hard nuts to crack. How much ever you tell them, oh, no way. They will listen, yes, yes, yes. And finally, they will go and participate in whatever places they have to go and listen where they're not supposed to go. Where you want to belong. Where you want to belong. Where you, you make the choice. Nobody's enforcing. God doesn't enforce, neither do I. Not the Holy Spirit. And this is not the voice of a man who, whom you hear, but it's the voice of the Holy Spirit. Warm welcome to this Agape Love of God series. We are in episode number two. And we are, what, lesson number five, if I'm not wrong. Um, and uh, we are talking about the details, right? Um, we are getting into the, slowly getting into the advanced way or topic, advanced uh, discussions, right? But the basics are covered in episode one. Please listen. Episode one is available, right? You, you don't have to be so lazy, my brother, my sister. YouTube is a very simple tool. You just go there. I, you have my channel details. Go and click the playlist. You will see all the playlists being given there. Get into a playlist and start playing. You know how tough it is for, for me. <laughs> because I, I am the... Uh, I won't say I, I. It's me and Holy Spirit, right? We pair up and we work in, in partnership. Myself and Holy Spirit, we sit together, we preach, we research the word of God. And he teaches me and teaches you. And then I spend my time in creating that media and uploading it and it takes a lot of time and you want to you know you say i don't have time oh you what what time you have to just download or just you, all of you have internet in our in your phone yeah just play the playlist and pause it tomorrow whenever you get time then you know, when you're in your gym or jogging or walking or in kitchen you just have to switch on and put your earphones and start listening right let the word of god travel in your heart and you will see the difference. You listen to every playlist, right? Every topic we pick, we get into the details. You will not get such detailed teachings as far as Bible is concerned in this world because it's a preaching world. Pep talks, motivational speeches, prosperity gospel and all. I'm not against prosperity. I love prosperity. Without money, what can you do in this world? Yeah. Our God did not invite us to be paupers and beggars. Yeah. You got to be rich. Therefore, you can give more. Not to stake up the money and the moth and rust will come and eat it up. Not like that. But you could give more. For, to, for you to give more, first you need to have on splendid measures. Good. But that is not alone. Something which can take you towards the kingdom of heaven. But detailed Bible teaching uh, brings that light and uh, impoverishes that um, instruction and you know sheds light on your current state of mind. And you can start applying these doctrines, these principles, these instructions, these laws, these commandments, which we are explaining in detail through practical illustrations. That's the beauty of our ministry. Yeah, we don't talk in a doctrinal language or in a traditional language or in a theological language. No, we talk in a practical language. Jesus' teachings were all practical. He spoke through parables, which could be easily applied, understood and easily applied. And as if that is not enough, we are giving a lot of more, lot of the more explanations. Okay, fine. You don't have time. There are short videos available. Yeah, Are you at least spending time to watch the short videos? Some people only raise concerns. Red flag always. We are not able to see your face. So I ended up manufacturing hundreds of short videos. You know what an effort it is. And you don't watch that. Neither this. Am I yelling at somebody? Yes, I am. Because I love you. I don't want you to burn in the lake of fire. This is the last chance. Fine, my brother, sister. If you get enough of appetite at your in your church, you're convinced thoroughly that you are doing the uh, doing everything uh, you know right according to the bible all is well with you fine no problem you don't have to listen to me but you have to still share this gospel right you can't preach you can't teach you don't have time or you don't have the gift at least you could just share these channel details at least that you do no you're busy brother isn't it actually you're not that busy brother or sister you're a busy body you can't be busy not 24 hours sorry my jesus was the most busiest person but you know what he had found enough time. His, what is the primary ministry for Jesus? Before I get into this, I will talk about that alone quickly. Come on, tell me. Some people say healing ministry. Some people say miracle worker. Some people say teacher. Some people say rabbi and teacher, right? Rabbi. Some people say always he was spot among the Gentiles sharing his love and compassion ministry, right? That is also. And he was the hope to the hopeless. He was the hope to the deprived. He was the hope to the rejected, dejected. And uh, wherever he went, he distributed the offering. How many of you believe that wherever he went, offerings were given and he put into the treasure bag and he appointed an accountant, that guy is a thief. But wherever he went, he would take the treasure and start distributing the money to the poor. 
the downtrodden uh, God, jesus would not make an about turn when he looks at somebody who is starving to death isn't it and many people think that this is the primary ministry the primary call for his ministry were these many things i'll tell you what the truth is the primary thing that jesus did was praying prayer <laughs> the remaining time whatever was available he served the people of god that's why jesus is such an example he is an exemplary role model in love and faith and purity in speech and in conduct 1 timothy 4:12 especially prayer he had taught us not only how to pray our father in heaven but he also exhibited that example always he departs after a long day he goes and prays all night and then immediately next day he goes to ministry which means sometimes he did not sleep even for 20 48 hours two days he wouldn't sleep and that's why when a pillow was given even in the midst of the roaring waves and all that in that uh, in uh, you know there, there is a place right and they call it as deep uh, in the in the boat and he slept in that room with a small room will be there because all night they will be fishing no they need, they will be working in shifts some will sleep and some will have a watch over the net like that and jesus slept so tired and yet he doesn't compromise so who are you if jesus was busy the busiest look at his ministries look at his achievements qualitative achievements and yet he would find that lot of time to fast and pray and pray before god and Uh, spend time with his father not only after call for ministry but even before that and that's why ji uh, the father in heaven looked down and said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased there wasn't any blemish in him by all means according to the standards of the old testament laws and commandments he still lived his life that's why jesus says in matthew 5:17 i never came to abolish any law but i came to fulfill it and that's why the new doors are open the new covenant standards and jesus spoke the extended laws and extended commandments and they are accounted to be 1050 whereas old testament you find only 613 laws and commandments how many of you are with me therefore if you call yourself as busy your busy body what doing nothing and wasting your time don't say that i'm busy at work and this and that you can still find time it's an attitude worship is an attitude do you know that how much you love god it's an attitude that you want to reveal you can still find time to pray read bible fast and pray god bless you all right warm welcome to this agape series episode number 2 and lesson number 5 and we had been dealing through these advanced topics last session we discussed from psalm 86 and especially 15 but you are lord or a god merciful and gracious slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness yeah oh i hope all of you understood this right if you have not understood please go through the previous session you will really get light on your situation and how merciful god is and today on the same lines we will be discussing couple of more scriptures um to discuss on these advanced topics because we are do- going through a categorical discussion we spoke about the basics of love now we are talking about the little more advanced uh topics of of this agape love and then likewise we'll getting in we'll be getting into six or more seven six five or six more categories and then we will conclude the series right i do not know how long it will go but we will see now romans chapter 5 if you turn your bibles to romans chapter 5 um i want to read verse number 8 but before which i want to uh, read verse 6 7 and 8 i've preached this already it's available in our playlist in some other series i don't remember which series but the title is christ in our place right so verse number 6 says for when we were still without strength in due time christ died for the ungodly additional references i could remember are the following 1 peter 1:19 1 peter 3:18 19 and hebrews 2:18 and uh, what is that uh, one more thing uh, 1 peter uh, sorry 1 john chapter 3 verse 9 uh, being the seed of god that is there was no blemish in him and he was tempted like you and me at all points yet jesus never sinned and uh, he died for the unjust although he was just and that's why his blood still holds that you know that that divinity and through whose blood you and i are redeemed delivered and what is that means right it's agape love and from practical standpoint if if, if you were not to able to understand what is this tempted like you and me at all points yet there was no blemish in me for example jesus how many of you know that he was born as a baby right he did not jump from heaven as a man with a beard and six foot tall and all that he was born like a baby like you and me you know where he was given birth in the stable 
and you know uh, recently chosen you know right chosen there is a series there they are doing uh, wonderful narrate narration of how who jesus was and they literally take you through that practical examples uh, from the bible they did a christmas series and there they show very clearly uh, there is a small pot kind of thing in that only they made jesus to lie down that was the manger for him yeah before the baby was born and all that day we all buy manger and keep it ready no but this jesus son of god heaven and earth are under the control of jesus he, he makes the choice to be born in that stable and uh, you know uh, you know that pot you know why they uh, why they keep that pot because all the wastes right everything that is ugly uh, sorry everything that is decayed and all that rotten apple rotten tomatoes everything they throw there and the and the, and the, and the cattle eats it uh, all they prepare that food for cattle and all that and that that was the only thing available there and joseph cleans that up and then they put a cloth and they made jesus to lie there right from his birth okay that that is humility that that we can understand but after that he starts to grow as a teenager right and there are hormonal changes in him and he knows a lot of girls like for example mary martha uh, they all grew lazarus and all uh, same age they all grew together and jesus never would talk anything uh, lustfully or you know crack some sexy jokes and all that because we are prone to do that right all of you are behaving like saints huh? you all know your past right i also know my past right all of us would go through this kind of environment why because that, that's how the teenage uh, world is that's how that too in current world my goodness people at uh, the, the little children at the age of 8 itself uh, or 8 or 7 itself they start to behave like teenagers because there is so much of exposure internet it's a very very important tool for ministry at the same time it's also a demonic tool it depends how you use and what you watch right as parents have an eye on your children and jesus grew like that and hormonal changes and all that after that he grew as an adult and then also you know there were you know the son of god he dedicated his life for ministries and he just cannot get into the sexual affairs or sexual intercourse even after marriage um, and he doesn't want to have any commitment as far as family life is concerned he is dedicated son of god living for the mankind and to be killed for the mankind as as the divine sacrifice sin offering therefore he sacrificed his family life of course he would have watched how other couple are living and all that uh, he would have the uh, he, he of course jesus loved children right do not rebuke the children they are the kingdom of heaven and jesus want to he would sacrifice he would sacrifice of course they cooked up lot of stories he was married to mary magdalene and all that nonsense yeah you want to spend time in watching those movies and all that go uh, go ahead and do that waste your time and finally you will find a place in the lake of fire right <laughs> jesus had gone through so much of sacrifices even in his carnal system the normal life which a human being could live he sacrificed and at the young age uh, uh, joseph passed away and all the duties and responsibilities came on his shoulders as an elder and all the children were you know very uh, young and some were babies also lot of brothers and sisters jesus had in luke 7 you can take sorry john 7 you take and read and uh, he carried his uh, father's responsibility took his father's spot and he continues to work as a carpenter and my belief is like jesus could have started his ministry much earlier if joseph has, had lived right because no responsibility would be on him but now he has to support his mother who is a widow now and jesus extended his life on earth um and then he prays about it and all during all of these things look to 52 he grew in wisdom and stature men and god and favor of god he grew in his spirit and he continues to read bible in fact he finished bible you know the old testament he finished at the age of 12 that's why he went to the synagogue and he was sitting there and challenging all these pharisees none of the questions asked by them were was difficult because these guys are all not ordinary fellows they were like absolutely talented and uh, well versed in uh, all this you know scriptural uh, references and verses and they are very very brainy guys intellectuals jesus made them took them for a ride three days and three nights and these guys enjoyed that interaction that's why they kept the boy they never sent anybody to find out whose boy is this and where are their parents no unless and until mary came on by uh, by all mary and joseph came all by themselves nobody went in search of mother mary or joseph 
they came all by themselves because it was so interesting to talk to this jesus and by you know the 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 um the scribes are saying that you know um at the age of five and a half or something jesus would have been walking to synagogue almost every day because it takes uh, roughly around seven or six and a half or seven years for him to complete the bible and he would make the rabbi sitting there to make him read the bible every day this boy would go and pull that hem of the garment and hey rabbi please read this for me can you and obviously the rabbi is going to lift the little boy keep him keep him on his lap and then start to read <laughs> who would who would uh, chase away that little boy who wants to listen to the scriptures and what do you think jesus would have done walking back home yeah many of us read bible like fairy tales novel book but this jesus would go back home and sit down and meditate meditate and that's how we got that habit of praying interacting with the father meditating researching sobbing yeah feeling so grateful what loving father he is how loving he is what is the definition of compassion agape love he discovers at the age of 12 sacrifices beloved he wants to play in the mud like just like any other kid but he would not he would isolate himself why because he had been sent to this earth for a mission for an objective now you understand better huh? i could go on and on telling much about this jesus um, you know but time is just not enough i have already spoken a lot truth about the cross series you you take you please listen you have spoken for 22 hours or something like that all about jesus you first understand who jesus was and then you will understand who jesus is you know why because till uh, even after he was resurrected seated on the right side of the father in heaven as king of kings and lord of lords almost that position is given yet you know what he says father i don't want this kingship and all that let me be the intercessor because my mission is not yet over i need to intercede for the needs of my beloved brothers and sisters i need to advocate their case because the accuser of the brethren devil is already at work always at work and they need my help they need my prayer and i will continue to pray pray intercede intercede and my holy spirit who i have left behind on earth is also praying with a groaning and grieving spirit i will give you references you will note it down and you read hebrews 1:3 1, 1 john chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 mark 16 last two verses colossians 3:1 and romans 8:26 beloved who you think this jesus is many people treat jesus and holy spirit as their maid servant because they are caught up with this word helper john 14 16 he's not the cheap helper cleaning your toilet yeah but it's a spirit of god do not insult the spirit of god else the wrath of god shall descend on you i'm not threatening you I'm telling you the truth hebrews 10 29 and john 3 36 okay now you understand why because you don't take this jesus for granted there is so much of suffering that he had gone through in his carnal system in a spiritual body after he was called for ministry wherever he went people would either make an effort to kill him or put the words in his mouth and make him a criminal accuse him finding opportunities to accuse him and arguing with him not accepting him as messiah how much ever tell us whether you are messiah you know how many times the pharisees would chase jesus tell us tell us plainly you know jesus would say how many times should i tell man while he was hung, hanging on the cross oh no pity at all no mercy forget about uh, the son of god and religious attributes right at least can you consider from humanitarian grounds that he was a human being hanging naked there and being bruised wet like an animal they dragged him and they thought it was a an animal there was no form or comeliness in him i say 533 says and they look at him and they say come down and prove now you are son of god we will believe jesus kept quiet but jesus instead instead of you know if i was jesus i would have really come down and given them left right center and again go back nonsense but jesus you know what he said suffering in the flesh means what i'm just explaining i have explained it in the truth about the cross series please glow listen understand this jesus father forgive them they knew not what they are doing in other words they are bunch of stupids and idiots they have never understood but they will understand after i am resurrected because my holy spirit will come and shower that wisdom and light what a compassion money cannot buy this beloved your efforts cannot believe buy that it's it, that is the definition of grace yeah agape love of god introduces jesus and through jesus you and i got that grace and grace introduces hope blessed assurance in the resurrection power of jesus second corinthians 5 1 to 10 says that titus chapter 2 verses 11 to 15 says that trained by saving grace paul writes a chapter about it and i have spoken also about that in many multiple 
series i've spoken about it you did not get it for free jesus worked hard on your behalf and my behalf right there was so much of suffering in his flesh that's why bible says in 1 corinthians 6:20 that he you and i were purchased for a price who paid that price your debts were cleared ransom for your sins and my sins yeah we have done a beautiful series day of atonement almost 40 hours of teaching available there you should go through such series that's when you will get light on this jesus and the suffering and how he was sacrificed as that lamb without blemish yeah he was just meaning what he was righteous son of god and he died for you and me in this christmas season and we are done with christmas and we are done with new year we are already in the new year right how many of you even realize this huh? for when we were still without strength without strength to overcome without strength to defeat this hopelessness without strength to overcome the rejection and dejection in our heart the depressions in our heart in due time christ died for the ungodly you and i deserve to live like that and die like that but jesus never let us like that that's why i told you he took the place as our intercessor what makes him to take the place agape love unconditional love love does not expect anything in return yeah which of the mother will expect i'm investing on my child where is my return Huh? <laughs> many people uh, there are parents like that very brutal parents you know wicked parents evil parents i've heard them saying you know you you're investing on your uh, son the here dowry system is there no therefore in fact many people spoke like that when my mother educated me uh, i have heard few of my relatives you know okay okay no problem you can invest on him because it was a very costly course those uh, that point of time uh, i was put in engineering and um she had to spend a lot of money to get me educated and i'm very very grateful to god and to my parents who who got me that education yeah i will never forget that but i have heard few people talking like yeah it's fine that therefore you get enough dowry and i can tell this boldly loudly before god i did not accept dowry my father in law is my witness you can talk to him i said i don't want dowry i'm not marrying your girl Uh, for the golden money that you give sorry keep it with you god bless you but god will give me and you know what when i told her i didn't have anything <laughs> i was a very young guy i was just growing in my professional career and i had so many battles that i conquered i did not prosper on day one god took me through a rough path initial 4 years it was poverty yeah defeats failures depression everything god allowed first 4 years then he slowly opened the doors of prosperity and then i realized oh my god how great you are how well you have coached me he taught me the value of money and then he gave me money saying then only i would take care of the money right money is a good servant keep it under your feet all right i just told this an example right now why am i saying this is because beloved money cannot buy this grace all of us have fallen short of glory and christ died for you and me and god is going to teach you many things to build that godliness in you and while you were having no strength that too in the times of weaknesses let us move on to verse number 7 i'm reading from romans 5 verse 6 and i'm going to 7 now from kjv version for scarcely for scarcely for a righteous man will one die scarcely means what rarely rarely maybe one in trillions that too he being a righteous man why would he die for sinners he deserves many times i have told the same thing when the worst of the sinners are being bet and for example the guy who was a brutal fellow in that egypt right very recently they killed him the public bet them to death you know what how much of aggression was in my heart i said he deserves that death long ago and so many years ago right and i was growing as a christian i was not matured fellow i was an immature idiot right and then when saddam hussein was executed i said the same now i realize who am i to judge these guys and am i any different from those fellows no actually the same adamic sin is still reigning in my body it is because of one man sacrifice on the cross i am pronounced as righteous all my sins are forgiven i was not executed i was not crucified why because jesus took that place hallelujah why i use this hallelujah i don't use hallelujah often why because hallelujah has been where is it in bible hallelujah many of you know that huh? in the pentecostal world or spiritual churches and all hallelujah will be used every one minute 
Alleluia has been used only after the defeat. There is a war happening and it is in revelation. It is a victorious defeat. Right? Uh, uh, Jesus defeated the devil right under his feet. As it has been prophesied in Genesis 3.15, Romans 16.20. The head of the Satan is crushed right under our feet. That's why I used that word hallelujah. Jesus took that place and he defeated this devil for us. That you and I need not live in poverty. You and I need not live in bondage or curses. <sighs> right? And rarely a person makes a decision, makes a choice to die for these sinners while they condemn. Right? If you are a righteous person, if there are 20 sinners and all of them are killed by God, won't your heart rejoice? Talk from the old covenant perspective. Forget new covenant. New covenant is all about grace. All are equal under the throne of grace. Old covenant, of course, they stoned the sinners to death. If they caught any prostitute red-handed, they killed that lady. But how about those guys who slept with her? They should also kill her, no? Because why? The guy who was stoning itself would, be, would have slept with her. And he pretends to be righteous. Why? Because he doesn't want to get killed. That's why Jesus said, he started writing down the names. That's what some of the scribes are saying. All the guys who stood with the stones, no, he started writing down the names. You also slept, you also slept, you also slept. Some people are saying, oh, he started to write the Ten Commandments, one after the other. Uh, so there are multiple interpretations. Ultimately, Jesus would not condemn that lady. Yeah, if, 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 you, if you guys are coming by the law, let all of you be judged by the law. Then he said, okay, whoever have no sin in you, come. Throw the first stone at her. Everybody fled the spot from the youngest to the oldest because all went and slept with that lady. <laughs> and that lady gets the privilege to be the servant of God and she died as a matter for God, for Jesus. But all these fellows who dropped the stone and went and they went to the lake of fire. <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is every righteous person would like to always condemn the sinners because they deserve for condemnation. No, no two ways about it. No doubts about that. Okay. You and I deserve for condemnation, but Jesus says, no condemnation on my child. No condemnation on my beloved brother and sister because I carried all the curses of the world and I died for them. I purchased them for a price. They belong to me. I have to read this for you quickly. 1 Corinthians 6.20 You belong to Jesus. You are his property. How many of you agree? For you were brought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are gods kjv version says which are gods the other versions i think niv or bsi i don't remember it says you belong to god or you 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 i think you are god's property in some of the extended versions god cap apostrophe s gods which means what you cannot say my body my sickness my life it's not your life it is god's life it's not your body it's god's body it's not your time it's God's time. Therefore, please invest your time in the right areas and do not waste time. You're wasting God's time. Now coming back to the original point. Huh? Yet perhaps for a good man, someone... See, I'm, why am I telling all this is if you want to show that respect and honor back to God for the agape love that was executed through Jesus on the cross, there can't be a better verse than 1 Corinthians 6.20. That's why I read that. Show that respect. Give that respect to God. By saying that, am I asking you to resign your job and sit and pray, sit and pray? No, no, no. Even going to work is one of your earthly duty. If you slip on your earthly duty, you will be condemned to. Uh, you, you will be condemned in the day of judgment. You have to. You have, need to have a balanced life. Many people, oh, God called me, brother. Therefore, I came to ministry. Not before you have finished your earthly duties, brother. I'm a part-time minister. Why? Because I still have some unfulfilled earthly duties, and I do that and this. And many people ask me, where do you get this time? Are you not working properly? Come and ask my boss, am I working properly or not? I excel there and I prosper there. I know what kind of appreciations I get by the mere mercies of God and my Holy Spirit who helps me. All glory to them, not me. Okay, But I use the time. I invest it in the right areas by the leading of the Spirit. Yet, I do a very good job even in ministries. I know that. I have very few subscribers. I have very few views compared to some of the other social medias and entertainment videos, people watch like anything, left, right, center. Whereas here, very few people watch. I don't care about those numbers. You don't want to watch, don't watch and go to hell. That's what Jesus says in Revelation 20 to 11. Those that are filthy, those that are unrighteous, may they be more filthy and unrighteous. And three words are missing. Why? Because God doesn't want to be so rude and, and go to hell. What else? But those that are righteous do not be complacent. Do not be in complacency. There is a preaching in, you know, in one of the epistles. 
do not be so convinced and satisfied i am already a believer 30 years ago i took water baptism so what what is your condition today brother you are sitting in front of that idiot box and watching pornography aren't you oh if you aren't fine no problem but are you not a liar oh no you are not a liar you are not a person who accepts bribery oh no 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 you are not there <laughs> research that's why i gave you the scriptures at the beginning of the session itself 50 to 60 different passive sins are battling ready to battle with you every day and the source is mr devil who deploys his demonic agents who would come and trigger one of these passive sins or even the deadly deadliest sins right anger lust sloth being slothful being sluggish is also sin wasting time yes perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die even if you are a good man righteous man you would not dare to die why because my life no why i should give huh he is a sinner should i die for that fellow let him die let him be killed jesus never said that my time is up but god demonstrates his own love i thought of covering something else but uh, today i'm i'm getting a different revelation because the last time when i preached i spoke from a different perspective that's why the word of god is rejuvenating renewing and fresh every day you get different perspectives and interpretations that's why you need to be grounded and rooted in the word of god okay but god demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners christ died for us while we were sinners jesus was sent to this world john 3:16 all of us know right this is the extended verse of john 3:16 romans uh, 5 558 uh, sorry but god demonstrates with that be close but god demonstrates his own love towards us and while we were still sinners meaning what we were not even born and god definitely knew that you and i will be begotten in sin we will live in sin and we will grow up in sin because the ruler of the earth is a, is the is the is the father of lies is the father of sinners but he still died for you why because you will have a pathway that lead you towards deliverance and salvation and free you from bondages and therefore you could look up to this cross and live live eternally and possess that everlasting life and you could escape from destruction god bless you heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity as always we appreciate you father what can i say it's your agape love that is teaching us <clears throat> all of these doctrines which we don't easily get in christendom and we don't blame anyone but we want to thank you we appreciate we are we, are, we have that gratitude uh, that you call the sinners like us in your ex- exercising that patience oh lord who will get this patience but you are very patient and tolerant towards us help us lord help my brothers sisters who would want to overcome lord help them lord let your right hand hold them closely as it is written in isaiah 41:13 in jesus name we pray amen god bless you subscribe to our channel you will get automatic notification we are not running after numbers you will get automatic notification do not miss on any of these teachings make time and please listen pray for our ministries pray for me every day 10 seconds close your eyes and pray for me please i need your prayers um and then please share it with your friends relatives near ones dear ones and if you have any prayer requests please do not contact me <laughs> contact god okay go to him kneel down in his presence lift your hands to the sky and the and the gates of the heaven will be opened the door will be opened matthew 7 7 knock it will be opened seek you will find and uh, please ask him and he will grant you all his petitions all your petitions and do not lose faith and hope god bless you take care i'll meet you soon in the next session